Welcome back. For this Flatiron Student Tech Tip, what we wanted to do was to take a better look, a clearer look, at the factory PCB system of the Subaru 2.5 liter turbo engines. Uh, and that's what we have in front of us here. Uh, it all stems back to you know, what we found when we put on our catch can and the results that we got. And you know, when we came back and tried to figure out well, what happened, why did we see the results that we did, um, we started looking at the PCB system and we realized two things. One is that on, a, on, a, on an engine in a, in a car that, that has everything else connected, it's hard to really distill down to the PCB system and visualize what is going on. And, and two, that the PCB system is a lot more confusing and complex maybe than it would seem at first glance. So that's where this all comes from. We decided, well, we should distill it down to just the PCB system and just kind of take a good look at it. And that's where we are here. And, and even with that, there's a lot going on. So that's where we wanted to break it down and, and just kind of walk through it. Um, so when you're, when you're looking at the PCB system, there's basically three connections. That's what you need to pay attention to. Uh, we'll start here with this metal line uh, on the front. This sits on top of the coolant crossover. Uh, this front metal hose, that's actually part of the cooling system. Got uh, feed from the oil pump coming up to here. This goes over to your auxiliary coolant tank, and this is where your radiator cap would be on the engine bay. But this rear metal pipe, this is present on all of the 2.5 liter turbo EJ series engines. Um, the two liters did not have this, and, and you'll see why here in a second. This connects to this crankcase breather port that is, again, only present on the 2.5 liter blocks. It is not present on the two liter blocks. Um, though I should say some of the uh, JDM EJ207s at, at one point did start getting this and had the same connection. So, so if you follow this over, if, like if you look down this, you're, you're looking straight at the crank. It comes up, metal pipe connects to this metal pipe, and you follow this over, and it goes to the rear port on both valve covers. So what this does is it connects the crankcase to the valve covers. Best guess as far as what this is doing is equalizing the pressure between the left and right cylinder heads in the crankcase. So you wouldn't run into, or it helps prevent a situation where you'd have positive pressure in the crankcase that could push against the heads and maybe slow down or stop oil from returning from the heads um, to the pan. Second connection is, is, involves this metal line here. This is the metal line that bolts to the front of the uh, factory intercooler. We'll go back to the valve covers to the forward port, smaller hose, and follow that up, and that goes to this metal line at the back so left and right valve covers are connected through this metal line, comes forward, is joined here with this second line, comes forward, goes directly to the turbo inlet. So we have another connection from each left and right valve cover directly to the turbo inlet. And then the third connection is the one off of the uh, factory oil separator uh, plate, which is back here. It's a little hard to see. So I've got another one right here. So this basically sits on the, the um, oil separator, top of the oil separator comes up where this white connector is right here. This connects to your turbo inlet hose. And then this small hose goes and connects to the intake manifold. Now, in this PCV tree, this little bump here, that is your PCV valve. In the O2, early O3 WRX, the PCV valve is actually threaded directly into the manifold. But either way, it functions the same, which is that when you're making positive pressure, when there's positive pressure in the manifold, the pressure comes down this hose and shuts the PCV valve. So then it's not doing anything. When you close the throttle blade, because this is behind the throttle, um, the manifold goes into vacuum, the vacuum pulls this valve open, and then you're using that manifold vacuum to pull, or to continue to pull from the top of the, the oil separator. Under positive boost, there should be enough pull because this is sitting right in front of the turbo, basically that the pull would be coming from this, this white fitting of the turbo inlet. So basically, the PCV system is, is made up of these components that connects the crankcase to the valve covers, the valve covers to the turbo inlet hose, and then also the top of the oil separator to the turbo inlet hose and the manifold vacuum, and that's where your, the PCV valve comes into play. Um, so now, in, one of the things we, we saw as we started looking at that is some pretty interesting details about the, the factory oil separator system and the valve covers themselves. So now we're going to take a closer look at those. All right, so now we've moved around to the back of the block, and we're going to start with a look at the valve covers. The thing that was most surprising to us is if you look at the small hose on the front, which again goes to the, the pipe to the front of the intercooler directly to the turbo inlet, this plate actually hides baffling. There's baffling on each of these valve covers to try and prevent liquid oil from coming up and getting pulled into the turbo inlet, and it's on each side. These little holes, so that's you know the air feed, and this is the oil return, and that's present on both valve covers. So there's actually there's a lot more of a uh, or there's actually a separate 
system built into each valve cover to try and prevent liquid oil from coming up um, from the valve covers and going into the turbo inlet. And similarly, when you look at the separator plate on the back of the engine, which is right here, this plate, you know, bolts, bolts over the, the separator section and it's got these two, uh, two steps in it. The small step basically sits right underneath the feed for the PCV tree and this larger step is basically dividing the, the area between the, the, the feed and the return. Again, with the purpose of you know, pulling a vacuum here and trying to pull pressure out of the crankcase um, and prevent any liquid oil from coming out through the top. The most fascinating thing that we realized in, in taking a close look at this system was that the oil pan is part of that too. Um, at some point it dawned on us, wait a minute, there's an O-ring on the oil pan. Does it connect to the separator plate? And of course, sure enough it does. That O-ring on the oil pan is what connects to the drain for the separator plate. And that got us, got us to asking, well, why is that there? Why is there an O-ring in a tube there? Because pretty much every aftermarket pan that we could find, that's not present. Um, it's obviously the drain for the separator. And we asked a lot, a lot of people. Uh, and it was surprising how many people had never given that O-ring a second thought. Um, from all the information we were able to, to glean, we have two guesses as to why. One is, because that O-ring connects to the drain, and this is obviously on the back of the pan, under hard acceleration, if there is any kind of oil sloshing this way, because it's sealed, there's no oil that's going to move into the separator plate area under hard acceleration. The other interesting theory that we have is, is related to the tube here. So this tube comes down into the pan and it terminates right about here. And it, it's pointed down right towards the pickup area where the stock pickup tube sits. And um, our NSX tech, Chris Whalen, had the, the brilliant idea that, well, maybe it's there to use the, the pull of the factory pickup tube and oil pump to help pull the drain or to scavenge the drain from the separator plate. So you look at all of that and it's actually there's, there's a surprising amount of, of detail and thought that has gone into the factory PCB system. But we still know that it fails. Um, we know that on modified cars there are limitations. You know, it is as much work as Subaru did to try and prevent oil from getting out of the engine and through the PCB system, it still happens, you know. And our reasoning in taking this deep of a look at it is, you know, for one, the more that we started to look at how things were connected, what, how everything worked, the more fascinating it became. But also we realized that the better understanding we could have of how the stock system was put together and how it worked, the better choice we would be able to make as far as how to then improve upon that system to get the best result for you know, the modified car, you know, based on you know, which air oil separator, how to plumb the air oil separator and so on and so forth. So, that's, that's basically uh, the, the factory PCB system. Um, thanks very much for watching. Thanks for your support. Uh, if you found this video helpful, please do drop a like and stay tuned for more Flatiron Studying Tech Tips.